What's up guys and girls, welcome to another repair video. So, in this video today we're going to be working on yet another Xbox One S. This console I purchased a little earlier today for £50. It came with a white controller, which I've now got thermal paste all over, so that's got to have a clean. The controller works, um, or as far as I can tell it works, I haven't fully tested it yet, but the controller works, but this console originally came um, it was originally I was originally going to give the guy seventy five pound, which is around about eighty five US, uh, and it only needed a HDMI port. Um, so we'll take a look inside there, and you can see that a HDMI port is pretty mangled up. Um, however, um, the person who sold it to me lives in a block of flats. He's walked down the stairs with it and dropped it, and now the console doesn't power on at all. So I'm going to try and fix it, but it's very doubtful. Um, I get, like I said, I was originally going to give him £75 for it, I ended up giving him, I gave him the 75 and said if it doesn't work I'll just, we'll work something out and then he sent me £25 back um, as we agreed because I couldn't get it working so I mean, my table's a bit of a mess but uh, yeah, he, uh, I mean you can, you can see just on, uh, just by looking I mean it's not right, um, I'll just wait for that to stop shaking. Um, but you can you can see just by looking at it that it's not right. Uh, so there's a bit of impact damage um, around there. So this seal has never been removed, but because it's knocked the case off a little bit, well actually yes it has as pro damage. So it has been opened before. Um, so but there's some damage to the. Uh, there's some damage to the corner, um, so it looks like it's landed on the disk drive, which, uh, I mean, I don't know, it's one of them things, I'm going to have to open it up and see what we can do, but first of all, as always, let's just um, pop in a power lead, so let's get rid of that one, because that's not plugged in, uh, but let's get this one, so this one is plugged in, and uh, yeah, I can hear the little fizz from the power supply, which means there's power going to the power supply, but... Uh, that's plugged in and we're getting nothing at all so uh, I mean when I turn the controller on as well like there's the controller it's apparently linked to this console but obviously it's not turning the console on so it's not going to be a power board issue um, I mean I can always plug the USB in and see if it fires it up I don't think that works unless it's synced I'm not sure uh, yeah, that's uh, no power at all going to the USB port either, so... Yeah, something in something inside is wrong, I mean... It's a bit of a shame because, like I said, it come to me for a power supply, so... Uh, it come to me for a HDMI port, so... You know, it's a bit of a shame, really, but what can you do? Um but as I've said in previous videos, at fifty pound, I'm not going to lose money. I mean, the controller's worth thirty, um, and then the uh, the controller's worth thirty, and then I'm bound to get twenty pounds worth of parts out of this. And I mean, if I can't get it working, then I, I do still need a bottom case for one of my own consoles. So yeah, that's. That's one thing. I need this bottom plastic, this bottom black bit. Um, I took one off the service. I took one off the service the console and uh, cracked it. So that console has got no bottom plastic on it now. So if I can't get it working, I've got a use for some of the plastics, and then the rest I can sell on eBay. Um, you know things like the power supply, the hard drive. Uh, you know it, it's it's got its money there and. Uh, I'm certainly not going to lose money. Um, I'm bound to get £20 worth of parts out of this. And like I said, the controller's worth 38 so I'm not too worried. Not too worried at all. So we're going to start off by opening this up and we're going to dive straight in. Uh, I'm going to obviously try a non good power supply and things like that. Um, but I mean, unless it's. Unless the seller's dodgy. Uh, I mean, it was a private sale on Facebook. 
but unless the seller's dodgy, which I mean, he knows I live two streets away from him, so is he gonna try and rip me off? I don't know, but uh, I mean, I'll make a profit either way, so yeah. So I'm not too worried about this. I might have to sit on it for a couple of weeks while I sell the parts, right? So we've got a loose screw already. Uh, so this screw here, um, in fact, there's a few loose screws, so there's one. There's one loose there, there's one loose there. Um, yeah, that, that's it so far. So we've got two loose screws. Um, and these... I mean, this has been opened. Look. Clearly this console's been opened, so... I'm thinking... Was it already damaged and he's... Uh, you know, palming it off on me or something. I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Uh, so this is the one terabyte version as well, by the way. First thing I'm gonna do once I get the case off is I'm gonna try a non-good um, power board. Make sure it's not the power board. That's at fault. And if it is, great. If it isn't, well, it's very unlikely that it's going to be the power board. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's clearly knackered. Like, that shouldn't come off there. Um, that shouldn't come off the back of there. It should stay on there. So, um, I mean, all right, whatever. Like, it's fine. Uh, right. This is... Hmm... Hang on. Yes. This has got some sort of liquid. This has some sort of liquid, ladies and gents, so it could well be water damaged. It's been opened. We've got, yep, something on the fan. This has been cleaned, so it's definitely been opened. Uh, we've got something on the fan here, so some evidence of... I don't know what, to be honest. Right, let's try... Ah, the power... Okay. The power supply has been left out. Alright. Let's plug that in first of all, because it's not going to come on without that. That's plugged in. I've never seen a power supply come out from drop damage. Never seen a power supply come out from drop damage. Uh, okay, let's let's try it again. Whoa, whoa we have fan spin. Okay, sweet, beautiful. not turning off wow I mean right we're not turning off that's awesome well I guess I'm sending him the 25 pound back because I did promise him I said if I could get this to turn on I would send him the 25 pound back um, so I paid him by bank transfer when I got to him uh, I mean, we can't test the HDMI. We simply cannot test the HDMI because it's broken. Um, we need to change that first of all. Uh, I've just blinded myself. I do that every time. I turn this on and I forget to cover the light up and I've just blinded myself. Uh, so basically, I paid, he paid I paid him by bank transfer. Um, you know, while I was there, I mean, I would never, re never recommend paying by bank transfer unless you're right in front of the item that you're trying to buy. Um, because it's as good as handing cash over. But I was there in front of him and I paid him by bank transfer and I said to him, uh, because I saw him drop it and this is the second console I've brought today that I've seen that the person has dropped it and that is no bull crap. Like, genuinely, I brought this console earlier, a PS4, which I'm going to get a video done on, but obviously not in this video. And the guy walked down his stairs Got to the bottom of the stairs and literally dropped it. 
right in front of my eyes. Two people in one day. That is no bullshit. I could not make this up. Two people in one day dropped the consoles that I was buying. Um, and uh, this one's got some some damage to the case, but that's not a problem because I do have a box full of spares. Um, cases especially, and I might put that into a white case actually because my white case for it is really nice. Um, but no no bull crap it, it, you know it's uh, it's a genuinely two people dropped the consoles in front of my eyes in one day and I was absolutely devastated but the PS4 still works uh, so the PS4 still goes through a white light luckily um, and uh, apparently it's got a disk drive issue I only paid £30 with a controller so you know I mean the, the guy who sold it me brought a Xbox One, an original Xbox One off me last night for £130. Um, and the reason I sold it for £130 is because um, there's a shop in the UK called CEX and I could have got £153 from them, but I would have had to post it. So I listed it on Facebook for £130 and someone literally ripped my hand off in minutes. Literally minutes. He come and collected it, everything was happy, but the controller that I sold him with it for some reason wasn't sinking. Now, it was a controller that I'd uh, got lying around and I was using it through USB because I didn't have any batteries in the workshop. Uh, so I didn't know. And then I said to him, I said, look, I'll come and bring you a new controller. So I took him a new controller and then he said to me, oh, I've got a PS4 for sale. If you want it, it it's faulty, it needs a new disk drive. Um, give me 30 pounds, you can have it. So, you know, I can't turn it down. I can make 130, 130 140 pounds back on it. Um, it's easy money, uh, especially considering it's just going to be the rollers inside, and I wasn't going to quabble with him on that. Um, I bought an Xbox One yesterday for £25, that was the one I sold for. So, I mean, no, I bought an Xbox One, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I sold, but I sold it for £130, I think I paid £40 or something. Yeah, that was it, I paid, uh, I paid £40 for an Xbox One and three controllers from a friend of mine, that was 40 uh, needed a new hard drive, so I put a new 500 gig hard drive in it, and it works sweet. Sold it for 130 quid, so I probably made about 70 quid profit on that after the uh, hard drive and, and a little bit of time. And I did that as a live stream on Facebook. Um, but uh, then I paid 25 pound for another console for another Xbox One. Uh, that was sold as an old power. I started a video on it, but it turned out to be a power supply issue. So I just changed the power supply and thought, yeah, I've bothered that one to my niece while I'm fixing hers. I'm waiting for a HDMI port to come um, because it's the original Xbox One and I don't have any. And she doesn't want the port swapping over from the HDMI in port. So, yeah, I've got a fair few. I've got a fair few consoles that I'm in the process of or waiting to sell. Um, you know things are going good. Uh, unfortunately, there's been no real video content that I can use for YouTube. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. I mean, I can't sit there and make a video on just trying another pair of supply. It's just not worthy. It's just not. It's not worth the editing. It's not worth the time. There's there's enough videos out there for that kind of thing. Um, but when it comes down to an actual repair, then I can. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pretend there's something wrong with it when there's not. Um, but that said, I do need to make some content, so this PS4 and this one will become videos. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. I was devastated when he dropped this console. I'm going to send him the £25 back because I'm not going to rip him off. You know, it's just one of those things. Um, I turned it on while I was at my sister's. I was going from... I went from this guy's house to my sister's to drop the Xbox One off. Uh, I tried it at my sister's. Didn't have any tools there, so I couldn't check inside. But I tried it at my sister's, and uh, he didn't power on. So I sent him a video of it. I said, look, mate, it doesn't power on. Can we work something out? He sent me £25 back. Um, and I said, look, if I can get it to come on, then by all means, I'll send you the money back. Uh, and here we are. So, happy days. Have I left a screw in this again? Nope, it's just being stubborn. There we go. Them clips are a little bit of a pain in the backside sometimes, to be honest. But this is looking like it's just going to be a routine 
change the HDMI port and uh, sell it on for profit. So we have a one terabyte. There we go. One terabyte drive. Happy days. Okay, doke. I'm hoping there's no liquid damage. It doesn't really matter if there is, I can always fix it, but the console appears to be coming on, but there's just no point in going any further because we can't test the HDMI port. Hopefully, like I said, it's just going to be a routine change of HDMI, make a quick book, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I've actually got a couple more consoles on the way as well. I've got one with no power, which I won on auction today for six, £65. Uh, so that's no power, £8 postage, so £73 total, which is about right. <coughs> but uh, well, that's probably going to be another YouTube video because it's a no power issue. Right, let's get this board out I can't believe this turns on absolutely gobsmacked that this turns on I mean genuinely this was dropped onto concrete like he lives in a block of flats and the, the stairs are concrete uh, for the American viewers a block of flats is I think you call it an apartment, I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the stairs are concrete, and uh, these consoles do not like being dropped at all. Right, let's see if we can get this one out. Well, let's take that out first. I mean, this, is had, this has either had little to no use, or it's been opened before and cleaned. Uh, let's see if we can take the clamp off this without damaging it this time. <clears throat> Someone sent me a friend of mine sent me a message. Uh, spoke to me on Xbox the other day and said, uh, "Why did you post the video?" Uh, so if, if you haven't watched it, there's a video on my channel um, where I post a video where I get it all working. It was liquid damaged, highly corroded. I was all dead excited, and I uh, when I went to take this bracket back off uh, for the second time, I slipped with the screwdriver and I went into the board and uh, I got lucky I got really lucky but my friend sent to me he said, uh, he said why would you post that video no one's gonna trust you with their device if they can see that you have an accident like that and I said well that's the point it was an accident it doesn't happen all the time it's very rare that it happens to me because I take these a certain way like I'll, I'll use my I'll use my thumb usually as uh, kind of like a backup like I am now, I'll, I'll put my thumb in front of the screwdriver because then if I slip, I stab my thumb. And uh, I said to him, I said, look, accidents happen at the end of the day, and it's just one of those things. Like I'm not gonna, you know, it was a genuine, genuine error, and I'm not gonna cut that bit of the video out because you know it's just what happens sometimes when you're repairing consoles. So I've put up it, and it's one of them. No, right, the fan's gonna need a good clean. Uh, we have a small amount of liquid or residue or something on the board by the power regulation area, so by the power rails. Uh, nothing that's going to cause any issues, but I'll give it a clean later on anyway. So uh, I think the person who the person who spilt liquid in this, the seller. The original owner got really lucky there because, I mean, obviously, as you know, power rails are here. If that would have gone over here, we would have been able to change these MOSFETs. Um, and that would have made the value significantly lower. But I'll give that a clean anyway before we before we put it back together. First of all, though, let's get that port off and let's, uh, let's get this console fixed, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to pop you over to the blue mat now, so bear with me. Okay, so let's get this uh, 
let's get this board warmed up and let's start to get this old HDMI port removed. This is going to be, like I said, a fairly straightforward job. So we're going to be taking this old port off. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty da pretty badly damaged. Um, so we're going to need a new port. So let's just start heating this board up, shall we? And get it all ready for a new port. All right. So I'm going to set my temporary heat gun to 480 degrees. And we're just going to start removing this port. So I'm actually going to take off the nozzle for this bit, so bear with me. So we'll take off the nozzle and we'll just start blasting it with heat. And I can actually see that one of these legs here um, Looks like it's snapped, so the guy might have had a go at changing it himself. No problem. But we're going to heat it up from the bottom and we're just going to let it fall out, basically. Right, there's ripped pads under here. That's not good. That's not good at all. Right, so the ripped pads, it looks like, has been there for a while because they definitely did not rip off just. Uh, I mean, you saw that drop pretty much on its own. So it looks like we're going to have to do some sort of... Um, Repair on the traces. Um, well, that's quite annoying, to be honest. Um, I mean, those traces definitely did not rip off when I uh, when I did it. So I mean, right. Let's let's just get this down on the um, table on the bench. And this is quite annoying really, let's try and get you focused in here. So you can see there, there's about four or five traces ripped. Um, what I'm going to have to do is look under the scope and uh, just see what we're actually working with. <coughs> yeah, four or five traces ripped. It's quite annoying. So it's looking like we're going to have to do some sort of... Uh, Trace repair. Right, let me take a look. What are we doing? What are we dealing with? One, two, one, two, three, four, five traces. Five traces missing. You know, we might actually be able to. Uh, knock a few of these back down um, right let's try and get you in focus here right so as you can see there quite a few traces damaged unfortunately um, I've got a feeling that this has been opened and every repair has been attempted on this one um, because the way that I do these The way that I do these, it definitely, definitely didn't happen while I was removing it. But let's try our best to stick these traces back down. The good thing is, they're not ripped, they're just hanging. So I'm going to do my best to try and get these to sit back down. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it really. Okay, let's uh <clears throat> just gonna clear some space so I can work on this. 
I mean, this has definitely been a, a prior repair attempt, and I've got a feeling that's why the uh, power supply was unplugged. Because the guy said to me, and I'll, put, I'll pop a message up on the screen, look, I'll, I won't cover all the message, but I'll show you a message on the screen where he actually said I was going to do it. I'll, I'll try and repair it myself tomorrow if you don't buy it, basically. Uh, this was yesterday, so I have a feeling that this guy's tried to repair this himself and he knew that this was ripped. Um, almost certainly knew that this was ripped. So basically what I'm trying to do now is I'm just trying to pop these down into place because the traces are not ripped. They are pulled but they're not ripped. And this is all kind of making sense because there's solder missing from one of the legs. From one of the bottom legs. Um, yeah, the solder missing from one of the bottom legs. There's screws loose. The power supply was out. So it all sort of makes sense as to why, as the fact that this has got ripped pads, or pulled pads, not ripped. Um, right, I need some conformal coating and a UV, a UV light, I think. Uh, so the traces that are ripped, we've got one that's slightly pulled. Uh, so pin number four is slightly pulled. Pin number one is completely pulled up. Pin number three is completely pulled up. So they're, they're the ones that are going to the EMI filters. Pin number four, which is going to the EMI filter, is pulled up. Um, or slightly pulled up, rather. Pin number four is. Pin number five, pin number five is fine. Pin number six is completely pulled up. And pin number seven is completely pulled up. So what I need to do is I need to try and get these back into place, and then use so, then use some UV mask to hold them down. So I need to put some UV mask on, and I need to hold them down with UV mask. So basically glue them into place, um, but doing it doing it the proper way with UV mask basically. So let's do pin number six first because that's the one I've got in place. Uh, so I'm going to pop a bit of a bit of UV mask on that. Right, so I've just dropped a bit there. And what I'm going to do, because <coughs> that's quite a big blob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and place the rest of them down. I mean, I don't know if that's going to hold because there's a blob there. I very much doubt that's going to hold there. Uh, it does. Because once the... Like, once the new port is sitting on it, it should be fine. Right, these tweezers don't close. Well, I'm going to have to come from the left because I am left handed. This is really awkward with a left handed person, especially when there's a camera in the way. So what I want to do is I want to try and get this to sit back down into its uh, running track without ripping it. Uh, I can check for uh, I can check for continuity afterwards. Like after them held in place properly I can check for continuity. Alright, so that's a bit of UV mask over that one. And let's try and hold it in place so we can bend it. <clears throat> I mean, the worst case scenario is I can just run some jumpers from the pins if this doesn't work. But uh, I'd rather not run jumpers, to be honest. Right, so... 
It's really awkward as well to uh, control two hands under a microscope. So I need to press that down so it sits in place. And before I cure this, I'm going to have to get the UV mask cleaned off of the pins themselves. Or the pads, rather. Mm, I mean, this is going to be very tricky to do, to be honest. Um, no, that's got UV mask everywhere. It's not going to work, is it? It's not going to work, I don't think. So the issue is the pads that have lifted up are all very important pads. I'm just wondering how I can actually get these to stick down without without getting UV mask all over them. Right, so I'm going to have to clean all of this UV mask off and uh, try not to pull all of these pads up at the same time. I think a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a very gentle scrubbing. I should have checked these first really. As soon as I saw that as soon as I saw the uh No, we've lost one. Have we? No we haven't. Never mind. We haven't lost one. It's just moved across. So let's dry this area. Um, uh, yeah, as soon as I saw that there was a leg missing, I should have probably... I mean, you can clearly see that look, that, that leg is completely empty. Look, there's nothing, there's no solder there. It looks like it's been cleaned out. Um, so what I'm thinking is he's probably run the soldering iron across it or something too hard and sliced through the pad door. He's already taken it off and he's... Um, and he knows what he's done and then just gave up and said no I'll just sell it. I mean he's fixable. He's definitely fixable. He's certainly not as bad as the PS4 that I did. I just need a way to stick these down. Uh, I'm wondering if it's best to clean out these holes and then drop a port on top and see if we can get it to stick down without shorting I think I'm gonna do that so let's find ourselves a port okay so let's take ourselves some wick and we're gonna try and clean these holes out um, because we can't really 
we can't really use hot air to drop the port into place um, and the reason for that is because the pads are going to solder and they're probably all, all going to short out and then when I try and get them off each other they're going to end up falling so it's going to be a little bit difficult um, so we're just going to clean the holes out completely um, and we'll take it from there I mean if I have to run jumpers I have to run jumpers it's not a big issue uh, right let's use the solder sucker shall we <coughs> Right. Let's heat up the board. Solder sucker is not going to work. So the solder's not, solder sucker is not going to work because I haven't got three hands. Uh, so I'm going to use wick and heat and the soldering iron. So we're going to I'm going to heat it up from underneath. Yeah, like I say, this is um, this is almost certainly a priority repair attempt and. Uh, He's had me in the bag on this one a little bit, so... I mean, I've never ever pulled pads by doing this from the bottom, ever. And I've done stacks and stacks and stacks of these ports. The only time I've ever pulled a pad is when I've been doing it from the top. Uh, which is why I do it from the bottom. Uh, the hole is almost completely clean. I do need it as clean as I possibly can. So usually what I'd do is I'd heat the port up and let it drop into place, but that's not going to be an option on this one. I've got to be very, very careful here because if I slip, I'm going to rip them pads. There we go. Right. So let's see. Let's see what this looks like when we've got a port on top of it. I mean, this is all making sense because... I mean, why would, why would the console be completely clean? It all makes sense. So let's... Uh, let's see what it is we're actually dealing with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this under the scope quickly. take a look right so this might be a little bit difficult 
to get these pins into position. Look, pin one's fine, I can do pin one. Pin three is fine, I can do pin three. Um, pin six on this port is actually already bent. See, the problem is these pins, these ports are off the board connectors. So basically, I buy them off eBay um, and them genuine ports, but they come off of faulty boards. I'm going to need to try and straighten that pin out, that pin out first. Uh, this is perfectly normal when it comes to faulty port. Uh, it comes to off the board connectors. But the issue is the ones I need to be straight and not straight. So this might be a little bit tricky, but we're going to do our best. I need a very fine soldering tip. But first, I need to put um, a little bit of solder. just to keep it in place so what I'm going to do I'll pop a bit of flux on here Just going to pop some solder onto my iron. I'm going to hold this port. That side's in place. Let's take some more flux. Let's take some more solder. Right, so that's held in position from that side. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to I'm going to pop some flux on the bottom. I'm going to push down on the connectors again, and I'm going to solder the bottom pins in, the bottom legs. Um, or rather, I'm going to push up on the connector, and I just realised you can't see. So, like I said, it doesn't have to look pretty for now. I can make it look beautiful afterwards. I just want to fill them holes as much as I can. Right, that'll do for holding the port in place while we sold out the other legs, or the back legs, the back pins rather, not the legs. Right, let's have a look. Oh, we might get away with this, guys. We might, we might be all right. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap irons, so I'm going to need to use a very fine tip to be able to solder these first six or seven pins. because they've got to be done with precision so 
I'm just going to pop my other soldering iron in because I've already got the tip on that iron. It saves me waiting for this tip to cool down. Uh, while we're doing that, so while that's heating up, let's just show you how we're actually looking. You can't really see too much there, but those pins look fairly well positioned. Uh, and under the microscope, they do look okay. Uh, they look like they're in line. Of course, we can test it with the multimeter and things afterwards. Uh, it's not going to be an issue. Um, but I think we should get away with this. We should be all right for um, solving the rest of them legs. So, I've got to straighten out pin 18 first before, before we go any further. So, let's take my soldering iron. Uh, I'm just going to take a thin pair of tweezers. Uh, let's get you in view, shall we? There we go. Uh, I'm going to have to move my microscope back a little. So like I say, I'm going to take a thin pair of tweezers. Um, pin 18 is slightly bent. Uh, as I said, that's to be expected from an off-the-board connector. Some of these pins are going to be bent. But all I do with them is I just hold them in place while I solder them. Uh, this is not sitting flush. Right, I'm going to have to use heat. Because uh, I need this to be as far down onto the board as possible. And at the minute it's not. So... Let's use some heat and let's push it down. So let's bring you back over to here. Yeah, I can already see it's on an angle. Right, let's have a look at that. <clears throat> I'm just going to quickly look under the scope. That's a million times better. So now, we shouldn't have any gap. Oh yeah, that's good. That's better. That's a lot better. Right, let's get you back into view, shall we? Well, I need the board on a slight angle. Okay, so, <clears throat> brief little intermission there because I had to take a phone call. Uh, but we're going to get back to this now. We're going to see what it is we're dealing with. And by the looks of it, we need to we need to straighten out pin 19 still. Um, sorry, not pin 19, pin 18. So we need to straighten out pin 18, and then we need to try and solder the rest of the pins. Um, right, so let's. Uh, so what I do, the way I do this when I'm using an off the board connector is I will take my tweezers, I'll heat up the pin that I'm trying to work with, I'll take my tweezers and then I'll just move my tweezers, like move the pin into position, melt the solder and then keep it there for a few seconds and what that does is it will solder it in position and keep it nice and, uh, nice and straight. So it's a little bit awkward because the camera's in the way. But I need to press down slightly on the uh, on the pin.
basically what I'm doing here is I'm trying to press down on the pins with tweezers and then push push it onto the pad so as it's in position because the problem is look a lot of these look these pins here the first seven five of them are ripped and the issue with that is if they're ripped then they're out of position but rather than running jumpers and making the board look ugly and having a chance of them coming loose over time I would rather solder the pad direct um, and because the pads are not completely pulled we should be able to do that is connected pin 2 appears to be connected pin 3 good pin 4 is good pin 5 is good pin 6 is good pin 7 is good pin 8 good pin 9 is uh, still a little bit loose but I think it might be connected I can check that with continuity 10 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. Right, okay. So all those pins appear to be connected. Um, what we're going to do now is those traces, what were damaged especially, I'm going to check for continuity to where the traces go um, at the other end. So I'm going to take my multimeter uh, here we go so I'm going to put the multimeter into good old fashioned continuity mode that's a mode that beeps when we complete the circuit so I'm going to start off with pin 1 and I'm going to go to the I'm going to go across the pins um, from left to right, checking the pin, the corresponding pin next to it. So, pin one is not shorted to ground, which is good. Pin two is, which is good. Do we have a short to ground on pin three? No. Uh, so I'll pin three, two, four. Good. Pin four, to, pin four to five is good. Pin five to six is good. Pin six to seven has a bridge. Well, that's weird. Pin 6 to 7 is weird. Right, let me take a look at an angle. How does pin 6 to 7 have a bridge? Right, they must be touching. 
right at the end of the uh, pads so one two three four five six to seven let's try and split them up I need to slide some it down the edge of that because they they basically need pushing away from each other they're not actually bridged um, in the sense of solder them it looks like them just uh, touching each other right at the end of the port which uh, obviously we can't have so I'm going to take my thinnest pair of tweezers that I have and I'm just going to slide them down there right let's see if we still have a short on 6 to 7 so to check 6 to 7 I can just check the far right pin and the far left pin on these um, EMI filters and no more short but we have continuity between the two so they're both connected so 6 to 7 is no longer shorted which is good so I have a 7 to 8 no nope. 8 to 9 no nope. 9 to 10 no nope. 10 to 11 no nope. 11 to 12 no nope. 12 to 13 no nope. 13 to 14 no nope. 14 to 15, no. Nope. 15 to 16, no. Nope. 16 to 17, no. Nope. 17 to 18, no. Nope. And 18 to 19. Good. Right. Now, we're going to check for continuity on these EMI filters and make sure that we have good filters. And um, what we're going to do there is we're literally going to test for continuity between the top and the bottom pins. And then test for continuity, and that should have continuity. And we're going to test diagonally from one pin to the next pin, and that shouldn't have continuity. Uh, and they also shouldn't be shorted to ground either. So let's check. We can check two pins at a time to check to see if there's a short to ground. Good, 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 and good. Okay, so now we can just check and make sure. That we have continuity between all the pins. Good, 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 good. Now let's check this one for shorts. Good. So EMI filter one is good. Or the group is good rather. Awesome. All good. Ladies and gents, I think that is repaired. I think. Right, let's give you a nice up, close up look of what we've done. So it doesn't look pretty, but that said though, when you've got pull pads, you can't ask for your cake and eat it. You can't have your cake and eat it, rather. Uh, and that, let me just make sure that you can see. So you can see that there's a few pins slightly out of place there, but none of those pins are touching. Um, obviously, with the pads being pulled, um, we've got to literally do what we can. Uh, but that's good. It's uh, all nice and all nice and uh, soldered. Everything's connected up. So now we just need to clean up. Um, so we're going to take a bit of isopropyl alcohol. Oh, I'll just drop my... Damn it. I'll just drop my cotton bud inside the bottle. I'm always doing that. Uh, we're just going to... Give that a nice clean. Uh, what I need to do is... Just make sure that I don't move any of those pads. Because they're very fragile. So let's uh, the one that I need to be concerned about is pins six and seven. So I need to check them again now. I've just put rubbed the cotton bud across them. So pin six and seven, make sure they're not shorted. So I'll do that from the EMI filters. So pin five on the first EMI filter and pin one on the second. We can't have those bridged. 
Awesome. Right, I think we're I think we're ready to test, guys. Um, and if this works, I'm a super happy bunny. So let's uh, let's get it back over onto the bench and uh, let's let's start assembling. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty enough. It's not the best, but you can see where those traces are lifted. Um, yeah, I mean. Hopefully this works, fingers crossed. But I am almost certain that it wasn't me that did that. Um, and if you watch my last video videos, you'll know that if I make a mistake, I will put it in the video. Um, I I'm probably 99% sure that it wasn't me that did that with those traces. Um, it all kind of uh, it all kind of makes sense in a way. Um, there was solder missing off one of the bottom legs and that would not have come from the factory like that so there was solder missing off one of the legs um, the case had been opened before it had been cleaned so I mean you can clearly see that this has been cleaned um, quite recently apart from I mean this here but uh, that's probably baked on there to be honest uh, you can see it's clearly been cleaned pre prior, um, and I've got a feeling that, uh, well, actually no, the, yeah, the thermal paste is still kind of wet, uh, not fully wet, but it's still kind of wet, um, so I'm going to say that it's recently been done, and the person said to me, on a message, if you don't buy it, I'm going to try and fix it myself, so I've got a feeling that he's, he's tried and failed. Um, and this is why people without experience shouldn't really be doing HDMI ports. Um, if you want to, you know, if you want to learn, by all means, go ahead, learn. Um, you know, watch videos, do practice on dead boards. Um, take a board out of a dead TV that you find in the street and take the HDMI ports off that. Um, you know, just don't do it on a live board unless you know what you're doing. Because you know you're gonna you're gonna mess up, and we all make mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes in the past. But that said, um, I'm experienced enough to be able to fix it, uh, or most of it. Yeah, that that's uh, I mean that's coming off way too easily. Look, that's fresh thermal paste. It, it all makes sense. Um, the guy's tried to fix it and he hasn't. He's broken it more, and uh, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Um, sometimes you get kind of those kind of sellers. Um, because of that reason, and because of the deceit, and I will say it on camera, because of that reason and because of the deceit, uh, I mean, the power supply was unplugged as well. There's no way that's coming, there's no way that's unplugging just from uh, just from dropping it. No way, they're way too tight. I struggle to get these open sometimes. Uh, but just because of the deceit, and I will say it on camera, I'm not going to send him his extra £25. Um, so, just to recap, basically when he dropped it, he gave me £25. Um, I tested it and it didn't come on. And it was a genuine test. Um, it didn't come on. And I said to him, look, I can either bring it back to you because I bought it as a faulty with, a, with no HDMI port, with a broken HDMI port, and now it's not coming on because you dropped it. Uh, in front of me, he dropped it in front of me, and you know he he agreed to give me twenty five pound back, and I did say to him, I said, look, if I can get the board to work, I will give you twenty. I'll give you the twenty five pound back, and I would have given you the twenty five pound back. I bought a console yesterday, and I actually said to the guy, said to me, you can have it all for twenty pound. This was an original Xbox One, so one of the day one editions, an original Xbox One with three controllers and I said to him look that is far too cheap if all it needs is a hard drive I will give you like, I'm not going to give you 60 70 pound because he only asked for 20 I'll give you 40 and I gave the guy 40 pound um, and I'll, I'll put a screenshot up for that as well just to prove I'm not lying I'm not gonna you know I've got no reason to lie if I'm a very honest person and I'm a very genuine person and if I say something I usually do it but because of the deceit because I know for a fact he's tried to repair it before and he's lied to me, I'm not going to send that £25 back. No way. No way on earth. He's cost me an extra half an hour work. And that £25 literally will cover half an hour because a bench, a 30-minute bench fee in my shop is £30. 
So that, that extra half an hour of work is going to cover the £25. Um, and that's just as simple as that. I mean, if people don't like that tough, then, you know, I think it's fair. He's lied to me. He's tried to deceive me. And um, I am adamant that he's tried to deceive me. I don't care what anyone says. Um, he's tried a prior repair attempt and he hasn't told me. Uh, and if he'd have been honest with me and said, look, and I've just explained this to my partner because I told her what was wrong with the console because she does sometimes ask me what, whether I fixed them or not. Uh, I mean, she's not really interested as long as I'm not losing money. But um, I said to her, I just said to her, look, he's, uh, if he'd ever if he'd ever admitted to me that he'd tried to fix it, I'd have probably said, yeah, well, I'll give you sixty pound because you've pulled the pads. Um, but I, I wouldn't have said. I wouldn't have said no. I'll give you fifty pounds. I'd have given him a little bit less, but not not twenty five pound less, because I wouldn't have known the damage as well. And then I would have been told in advance. But he hasn't told me in advance. Um, he's been dishonest with me from the start. Um, and he, he said to me last night because he's only two streets away from me. And he said, I said to him last night. I said I can do a bank transfer and I can come now. This was at seven o'clock, and he was all happy for, for selling it and things and. I said to him, I said, I can do a bank transfer and I can come now. And he said, oh, I've got to get it ready. Well, what does that mean, getting it ready? Has he got to put it back together? Probably. So, it all kind of makes sense. So, because of the deceit, I'm going to uh, I'm going to hold that £25 for the extra work. Um, like I said, if I'd have been made aware up front, I would have been fine. But that's really annoyed me that he's tried to deceive me like that or has deceived me like that not tried he has deceived me uh, yeah let's just uh, get this cleaned up I mean that's caked on there pretty good so I'm going to take some thick ended tweezers and I've just realised I'm blocking the camera sorry I mean, he told me that there was chocolate in the grill, and I was fine with that. I was fine with it when he dropped it. I was still willing to take the risk. So if he'd have been, if he, if he'd have been a hundred percent honest, then yeah, I'd have been, uh, I'd have been okay. But that really annoyed me the fact that he deceived me. I don't like deceitful sellers. I really don't. That is the one pet hate. If you're gonna sell something, be honest in the listing. Someone will still buy it because people like me can fix it. And I'm not being big-headed. I'm not being, you know, I'm not. I'm not making myself out to be some kind of soldering god. I'm not. I'm certainly not the best. And you shouldn't take what I do, how I sold that, as gospel, uh, because I'm sure there's a better way of doing things. But at least I'm honest. At least when I sell something, I'm completely honest. Um, a guy, like I said, sorry, I need to clean that. I need to clean this off here. It's, I'm just not happy with it being there. Um, a guy bought uh, an Xbox off me earlier last night, like I said, um, and I sold him the Xbox with a working controller. Now I'd only tested that controller on USB, and I assumed that the, um, the sync button would be fine, and it wasn't. So I went out of my way this morning, even though he collected from me, I went out of my way this morning and I went and delivered him a new controller. Um, and it's the same guy I bought the PS4 off, which will be in another video. Um, but, like I said, I'm honest. I, I, I stuck to my word. I said to him last night, I said, I'll sort it for you. And I did. I, I came through and I sorted it. All we ask as technicians is for a little bit of honesty. Like, if it's water damaged, be honest, tell me. If it's water damaged, it can be fixed. Or, most of the time, it can be fixed. Anyway, so just give that little tiny area a little bit of a, a wipe down, just in case anything did get on it. Um, scraping away at this uh, gunk that's caked onto the board. This area is, of course, a ground plane. So it doesn't matter if I scratch it. Not going to cause any harm to the console. There we go. Good. Excellent. Let's get that screw out of the way. 
Right. Let's get the heating back on. Now that we've cleaned the board. And we're not going to need to take this clamp off again. Unless, of course, it doesn't work, which it should. Uh, we actually don't need to take the heat sink off to get to the port. But uh, it's always best to because it gives yourself more working room. And I can solder them back legs afterwards. Like I'm not really fussed about that. I just want to see if it works so I can finish off this video. Uh, but I am going to solder the back legs. It's just they don't need to be done on video. As long as we get it working, that's all I care about. Uh, and this is the kind of damage that you deal with on a regular basis when it comes to people messing with their own stuff. I mean, by all means, mess with your own stuff, mess your own stuff up. But don't try and rob someone when you do. Because it's really annoying. Really does wind me up. But, uh, you know, that is life, I suppose. Alright, let's get the hard drive in. Um, I'm actually thinking about sending the guy a picture. Just to, just to pretty much annoy him a little bit. Uh, he said he might have had another console for me, but, um, yeah, not gonna happen. Not gonna, he's not going to give another console. He's not going to give another silo to me. It's just not happening. Even though, chances are I can make money on it. I'll take my custom elsewhere. I do not deal with deceitful sellers. Not a chance. Right. So like, like I said, there is no way this come out by dropping it. But that, I'm pulling on that with a fair bit of force. Like I'm not, I'm really not um, going easy on that. I mean, I'm not going to bend the board by doing it, but I gave that some stick. They do not come out. They are locked in. There is no way that come out from fall damage. Right, let's get the front panel and Wi-Fi cards in. Uh, there's the front panel. Let's pop in a HDMI lead. Good news is I don't need to switch leads anymore because I've got a HDMI switcher. I've had one for about three years and I've just never used it. Uh, because it's, it's a cheap Chinese thing and it's not very good. But let's, uh, let's pop you up to so you can see that. You notice I've mounted that as well. Uh, so there's my HDMI switcher. Right. I'm going to cover that LED because that's really annoying. Here we go, ladies and gents. We have a picture. Good, awesome. I'm happy. I'm happier. I don't know. I might send him the twenty-five pound. I feel kind of bad. Um, I do. I do genuinely feel kind of bad because it wasn't that much work to do. Um, it really has annoyed me. I might. I might mention it to him, but I'll probably send him the twenty-five pound anyway. Um, it's quite annoying though. Really annoying the fact that he lied to me. Really, really annoying. I'm going to speak to him and see see what he says I'm gonna contact him right let's synchronize that right synchronization works and it's been wiped which means he has had it on because that's been wiped but the good news is it works. Awesome. Uh, 
Okay, we have a little bit of a signal issue here, guys. So I'm not sure what's coming across on camera with this, but we've got some red lines here, which means it's going to need a retimer chip. That's quite annoying. So I guess we're not finishing the video yet because we need to change a retimer chip. Um, only problem is I don't know if I've got one. That's the only issue. Um, all right. All right. I'm going to take a little break and I'll be back shortly. All right. So the UV mask has cured, but one thing I've noticed is those little red dots are happening on the PC as well. So can you see that? So a little bit of uh, red spots there. So I think that is something to do with this little thing here, this HDMI uh, switcher. Uh, so I don't think that's going to be uh, an issue. Yeah, see that's uh, flickering on and off and then the spots are going. So I think that's a problem with either the, either the switcher or the HDMI cable itself. So basically what I'm using is I'm using a uh, HDMI to DVI converter. So there might be a fault with that. So I'm not concerned about the red tearing that's happening. Um, so I'm just going to make the camera back as it should be. So yeah, I'm not concerned. Um, this console, as far as I'm aware, is working. And this little chip here. So excusing my dirty hands. Um, obviously I've been working all day. Uh, but this little chip here is most likely good. So I'm going to pop that to one side. Um, and I'm going to reuse that when I need it. Uh, so... We have, ladies and gents, a working console. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to get it all back together. It's already had fresh thermal paste. So let's get this all back together and then we can um, end the video and be happy. Buttons are working. Our case is lined up. And that, ladies and gents, is one reassembled console. Right, let's give it a test, shall we? Uh, actually, let's have a look at the uh, alignment of that port first. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Perfect alignment of the port, exactly the same gap as the uh, HDMI input port. That's awesome. Let's pop in a HDMI lead, pop in a power supply, and three, two, one, and we're on. Awesome. Right, let's uh, give you a view. There we go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is working. Well, we got there in the end, I suppose. Uh, let's just test everything and make sure that it works. Uh, I also need to log into my account and make sure we're not console banned. So we're going to add a new account. Uh, right, first we need to connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, here we go. Connecting to wireless. Good. 
all services available. Sweet. Right, let's add an account. There we go. Sweet. Absolutely awesome. There we go. That, ladies and gentlemen, is done. Let's just test the controller. Because that was, of course, part of the sale. So this is the app I use for controller tester. So let's install. <coughs> so this is called Game Controller Tester. It's called is by a developer called Reconco or Reconco. R E C O N C O. It's a pretty good app. Uh, basically, it it allows you to test the controller. Um, it shows you the uh, pressure of your buttons. Uh, like your back triggers and things, um, it's pretty awesome. Game controller tester done. Right, let's uh, launch. New interface, test options, add the vibration, apply, and then we'll start testing on controller one. Right, so the controller. Um, it's pressing on its own, so it's going to need a clean. Um, so that's actually. Uh, I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it's vibrating. Very slightly, so it's on 4%. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm going to open this up and clean it all off video uh, because it it's been going on for a while now. Oh. Uh, Right, well, that's stopped now. I've taken it apart. So, yeah, it just needs a bit of a. It just needs a clean, I think. Uh, so, I'll do that off camera. Uh, I'll strip it all down, clean it. Uh, they're pretty simple to do. Yeah, that's as soon as I put that back. Uh, Yeah, I'll give it a clean, it's fine. Right, we have no stick drift. No stick drift that side. Up, down, left, right. Press the buttons, I click in fine. Uh, that's a bit annoying, but I can soon sort that. Back buttons are working. Yeah, that's good. Just need to clean, that's fine. Uh, Alright, ladies and gents, let's switch you back over so I can see my camera. There we go. So, yeah, I mean, apart from the seller trying to have me in the bag by trying to repair himself and messing it up, uh, we've managed to fix it. I mean, obviously, it was a lot more work than I anticipated. Um, and I didn't need to change that HDMI re timer, I see. Um, but, all good. <coughs> <clears> How's <throat> your my timers? They don't take long. Um, ten minutes max once you're inside the console. Maximum ten minutes when you're inside the console. Um, you don't even need to reapply the solder. I do sometimes, but you don't really need to. Um, so, like like you've seen, we can do that inside the console without it being out of the chassis uh, or without the heatsink being off, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Let me know whether you think this guy um, tried to have me in the bag or not. Or if you think... Um, well, I mean, there's no other explanation. It's either it happened with me or it happened with him. And to be honest, I've never ever ripped pads when I've removed it from the bottom. And if it was going to rip any, it would rip all of them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the fact that it ripped five traces... Not five in a row either, like not not even five at the corner, it was five random pads. You know, like one, I think it was like one, three, four, five and seven. So, or something like that anyway. Um, 
But let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you think he tried to have me in the bag or not. Um, but it all kind of makes sense. The power supply was uh, the power supply was disconnected. It had been open before. Um, it had been fully cleaned out. There was solder missing off one of the legs, uh, and the, the traces were ripped. So or pulled up. So I mean, there's no other explanation. He tried to fix it himself. He failed, and then he lied to me to get to, to get me to buy it. Good news is, I've got it working. Um, I'm going to send him his £25. Uh, I've got his bank details because I paid by bank transfer. I'm going to send him his £25 because otherwise I won't feel right about it. But um, other than that, I should make around about £75 profit on that on this console, which is nice. Um, I can keep the price fairly low and still make double what I paid for it. So overall, I'm happy. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget, to, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more future repair videos. Hopefully we'll find some more stuff to repair other than consoles, but uh, I enjoy doing them. They're pretty uh, pretty fun to do. So, uh, yep. Yeah. Until next time, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.